Hello, my battalion and viewers. I'm the Knight of Arcane, and we recently got the third episode of The Amazing Digital Circus, so I wanted to do something with the characters again. And with that, I decided to turn some Amazing Digital Circus characters into mech armor. Is it a little random? Yes. Was it a bit hard at times to design them? Also yes. Did these come out amazing? Super yes. Anyways, let's check out our amazing digital circus mech armor, shall we? So, I've been hired by an interesting group to make mech armors for. They're led by this man named Kane, a total chatterbox, and he came to me after seeing the work I did for that guy that I made the yellow and green armor for. I think his name was Gummy. But Kane had been working on making this group of superheroes that would put on shows and act like a circus and could fight crime. Problem was, no one with the hero gene was interested in doing this. Though a few normal people that wanted to be heroes signed up to help any way they could. So he had planned to try mech armors, leading Kane to somehow rope in Gummy to his operation and hire me to help make his amazing mechanized circus a thing. I do enjoy me a good circus, and was offered lifetime passes to their shows, alongside getting an additional cut of the circus's earnings for my mech armors and maintenance. The first guy I worked with was... What was his name again? Kingly? Kingsley? King Kong? Ah, Kinger. It was Kinger. I think. He'd been working with Kane for years and was quite the talented programmer. Though not always all there in the head due to... Something with his wife. I forgot the exact cause and reasons. But King is a fan of chess. So he wondered if I could take some inspiration from the King chess piece and royalty in general. It's there, if you squint a little. Mainly in the mech's head, but there's some shapes here and there that I think make me think of a chess piece. Plus use the same tannish color of classic white chess pieces to make up for any shortcomings the design might have with chess pieces. Alongside the tan color, used a nice royal purple and some white to help with the royal inspirations. For some reason, Kinger is like wickedly smarter and a highly confident fighter when it's dark, so figured something out for him to help block out everything and go all sicko mode when he needs to. Also, gave him dual shotgun like plasma cannons in his hands because he requested that also, for some reason. Not sure what Kinger does in the circus part of this superhero group. Maybe a trick shooter? Or a juggler? Maybe he's a lion tamer. Eh, whatever he does, it's going to look fetch in this mech armor. Another member of this troop was... Mangle? No, that's another person I worked with. Gaggle? Eh, I'll just split the difference and call them Gangle. Her story is a bit sad though, having lost both her arms in a car accident at a young age, and unable to pay for nice replacement limbs because we still don't have universal health care that would have allowed this poor girl to be able to do anything normal again. Capitalism. Great for my business, bad for everything else about this world. Gangle had to use hand-me-down arms from like, the 20s? Which were just slightly better than just replacing the limb with a wooden stake, but this pretty much made the girl depressed and shy. She joined Kane's idea at first as a part-time job in support, since he's paying his employees pretty well, even giving them dental. But once he made the decision to do the mech armor shtick, she gained a little bit of confidence and asked to become a hero for the circus. She's got guts. I like that moxie. 
And with the benefits and just putting some additional charges onto Kane's bill, I made Gangle some normal arms so she can make up for the last time the government failed to provide her. Along with some special ones for her mech armor. Speaking of, in a sort of dark but funny twist of irony, Gangle asked for her mech's helmet to be inspired by the Greek comedy and tragedy masks. Like how her life had been up to that point. That was some good dark humor from her, and I implemented that easily. She wanted a simple color scheme of red and white, easy, and then she asked for something special with her mech arms. Gengo wanted to be able to stretch her arms out for an extended reach, allowing her to pull and catch things from far away, to grab at stuff out of normal reach, and to swing from buildings if she felt like it. She wanted to make up for all the things she couldn't do growing up, and more. Twelve-fold, it seemed. And I was quite happy to oblige. Honestly, not that hard to do. I think that superhero hair kick has something similar with his limbs. But I went the creative route and used extending wires, connecting the upper and lower arms to accomplish this. Maybe it's a bit Eldritch Horror-like, but Gangle didn't seem to mind. It made her think of ribbons and streamers. So another win for Whitney. She apparently does some stage performances for the circus, always wanting to be an actor and dancer before the accident. So Gangle does little performances, reenactments, and dances on stage. Plus she's already a pretty good contortionist. Something she had me make sure her mech armor would be able to do and handle. And that was probably the hardest thing I had to do for this group. But it's impressive what she's able to do in that suit. I do hope the accident didn't make this a bit easier for her to do these moves. Okay, I'm not going to think about that anymore. Moving on. Kane is trying to get Gangle to do some trapeze work and other high up performance circus acts. But the poor girl is still pretty shy and now has all this attention on her as a hero and performer. But if she wants to, I believe Gangle can do it. Or at least my suit will protect her from any accidents. Just a quick reminder, we have a Patreon set up. It's a great way to help support the channel. As a patron, you get access to monthly art polls, early access to content, and monthly art related rewards, starting with character headshots. So if you can, head over to Patreon to become a patron today, starting at $3 a month. Every little bit helps. Anyways, now back to the mech armors. Kane was in quite recently with his newest star for his show. He said her name was Pomni. Oh, well, that's the name he helped her come up with. Since he found her in the circus's meat freezer, alone, starving, and with no memory of who she was or how she got there. So after he showed her around, met the members of the amazing mechanized circus, and made sure she wasn't going to die, I'm hoping not in that order, but Kane did tell me those details in that order, so who knows? He made the executive decision to have her join the circus. Not sure why he didn't take her to St. Hillary's, but he's a bit of a wacko and weirdo, so this isn't that surprising. But I will question why he's having her be thrown straight into a mech armor. He's pretty much like, get in the mech armor, Pomni. But she's being a good sport, and figured out to play along with him at the moment. When I asked what she wanted the mech suit to be like, though, Pomni was drawing blanks. Without knowing who she was or what she liked, it was hard to come up with a concept for me. She did decide she would like to look like a jester, saying for some reason watching some of the clown performances from the other members of the group and that she saw on TV while recovering did give her a smile, but didn't think she could go full clown, at least not at the moment. I agree that doing a jester would be a good middle ground for Pomni at this moment. 
still worked in some clown-like elements she could use later on, and stuck with the basics. Though it didn't make the helmet have the cap-like thing jesters have. And the color scheme? Oh, the color scheme. That, I'm proud of. With how I swapped between red and blue on each side of the mech, being uniform and mirrored, but also asymmetrical. And I think it looks really good. If not a bit basic, though. Maybe I'll redo her armor for this once she's ready. But she seems to be handling the circus really well. Slowly making friends out of her pretty much new family. She seems to be really close with Gummy and... Another one I don't remember the name of at the moment. Vagatha? Eh, I'll remember later. Though after a mission with Kinger, she thanked me and said some other stuff that was probably sweet. I just don't remember what it was about at that moment. Hopefully the circus part doesn't cause Pomni a heart attack. Kane has been putting her through the ringer, and she's grateful for the armor. Or Kane might have gotten her stabbed, maimed by geese, set on fire, her bones broken, stuck in another dimension between universes, shot her eyes out, or trampled to death by 20 elephants. Eh, she'll live. Maybe she'll even remember who she was. But I do wonder what she was doing in that meat freezer of all places. Oh well, let's move on. Our last mech armor today was made for one of the more reluctant members of the amazing mechanized circus. Their name was Bubble? No wait, that's Kane's assistant. Or at least their nickname. Pretty sure their names rhyme though. Zubel? Yeah, that's it. Or at least it's their name after they joined the circus. Zubel was actually a pretty decent hero beforehand, though I can't recall what their hero name was. But they were pretty impressive for a young hero with no powers. But, well, they made a bad call on a mission, resulting in them losing their right leg. Unlike Gengel, Zubel was pretty well off and could get a replacement leg. But the experience? Well, it affected them really badly, and they started to wonder just who they really were and all. So they quit the hero gig and did some odd jobs here and there, before somehow getting hired by Kane. Apparently not knowing what the job was beforehand. Unlike me and my weird selective memory, Kane did remember and recognize Zubel, and thought they'd make a great addition to his team. They are capable, but Zubel, you know, definitely has some form of depression and has a sense of longing for something, but Kane somehow convinced them that the circus would surely help them figure it out. Maybe, possibly, they weren't entirely sure, but he pretty much begged them to join. They weren't really sure, but in the end agreed to stay. This did carry over a little when designing their mech armor. Zubel unable to decide what part they should play on the team. So I suggested they don't. That they could mix and match for each mission with what they think would be best. They could switch between support, taking the skies, covering the ground, or taking the front. With them agreeing to this, I made the main body of their armor able to switch and replace different arm and even leg attachments, giving them different types like shields, claws, different elemental cannons, swords, and even ones focusing on increasing their strength. I include these elements of mismatched parts, with the head being asymmetrical, and with different attachments on the head for extra boosts and abilities. I also included extra ports on the back, allowing them to either attach wings, propellers, or even extra arms, including one similar to the arms I gave Gangle. The sword peg leg for their right leg was one of my favorites to come up with. 
Funnily enough, they claimed they didn't like how the final suit looked, but I could tell, they did. And over time, Zubal has been on more and more missions, helping however they can, and in whatever way they think will work best in the moment. Zubal has a long ways to go still, but I believe in them, especially when wearing a Whitney Parker original. I hope you enjoyed this talk. There are a few other members I can talk about sometime, so feel free to let me know. Oh, how about you stay for dinner? I'm testing how well a pizza oven I'm putting in one of my mech armors works, and could use another opinion. Colleen has been helpful, but they're out of town for the moment. What do you say? Care for a slice? And that was the Amazing Digital Circus as Mech Armors. I'm just now realizing that excluding Gangle, these are the same characters I used in the Variety episode after episode 2. Whoops, we'll make sure to mix it up next time. But I enjoyed this. Gangle and Zubal are my personal favorites, and Zubal's took almost two hours to draw. Um, <clears throat> sorry for that outburst. Though the time I took on them is true. But what do you think of them? Let me know in the comments, along with other amazing Digital Circus characters I should turn into mech armor, other series I should turn into mech armor, and other things I should do with the Amazing Digital Circus. For more Amazing Digital Circus content, we have the two variety episodes, one for the collab, and one focusing on Gummy Goo, along with when we turn the cast into animatronics. And for more of Whitney's mech armors, we have when we turn Pokemon into mech armors, and when we turn the Mad Ben 10 variants into them, both acting as our 1000 subspecials. And while we won't be announcing the awards for the last video here, we will set up the awards for this one. That being, Personal Favorite, Best Designed Mech, and Best Shading. And if you liked what you saw, then leave a like, and subscribe to join our growing little arcane town. To be in the know for future videos, polls, and our spooky month plans. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later!